with energy prices in Europe and around the world rising, there are concerns that this winter in France will be tough. La sobriété s'est imposée comme une nécessité. In response, the government has launched a new energy savings drive. Its aim is to cut consumption by 10% by 2024. The goal is to go carbon neutral by 2050. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of France in Focus. I'm Delon de Souza. France, like other countries in Europe, is grappling with the rising cost of energy. It's just one of the consequences of the ongoing war in Ukraine. Electricity in this country is produced predominantly from nuclear energy. So, as we head into winter, why are there concerns? France sources most of its electricity from nuclear power plants. Atomic energy accounts for 70% of total electricity production, more than any other country. But at the moment, almost half of French nuclear reactors are shut down for maintenance or repairs. Just 31 of 56 facilities are working. They forecasts that France won't have produced this little nuclear power in 30 years. While France relies on these nuclear resources for 40% of its energy needs, it's also reliant on oil and natural gas, which make up 28 and 16% respectively of its energy use. France imports almost all of these two resources, 99% from abroad. Renewable energy only comes in fourth position, accounting for 14% of consumption. Of these, the first source is hydroelectricity, but global warming and this summer's drought has left dwindling water levels. Hydroelectric reservoirs are only 64% full, 14 percentage points below average. Reserves which are usually vital to helping see through energy demand peaks in the winter. To reduce its fossil fuel and nuclear dependence, France wants to speed up the development of renewables, in particular offshore wind energy, with a target of 50 wind farms by 2050. French authorities are warning of rolling two-hour power cuts in case of shortages in a worst-case scenario. The government has unveiled its energy sobriety plan. Here's a look at how businesses and local authorities are adapting. From turning off lights to lowering thermostats, the French government is promoting efficiency as part of efforts to use less energy. Cities across France are adapting to the new reality. In Monton, near the French Riviera, the old outdoor public lights are being replaced with LED lighting. The city hopes to save 50,000 euros. While in this suburb of Lille, the street lights will be turned off between midnight and 5 in the morning. It saves us 40 percent or about 200 euros for a single night, since a full night costs us 400 euros. In Paris, stores on the Champs-Élysées will turn off their lights at 10 p.m while this year's Christmas display will go dark at 10.45 p.m. and end a week earlier. Such measures are expected to net energy savings of 44 percent. The Eiffel Tower, too, will stop twinkling an hour and 15 minutes earlier than normal. Private businesses are also being called upon to reduce by 10 percent their consumption of both lighting and heat. This envelope factory in northern France, which uses a lot of electricity, is already planning to increase night shifts. That's because the energy cost can be up to 200 times cheaper between peak and off-peak hours. En passant. By shifting our production activity to the evening, we're protected from the peak time slots with the high prices. And the government also plans to do its part. 190,000 administrative buildings and 2.4 million offices will have no hot water in their bathrooms, including here at the French Finance Ministry. <laughs> We're accustomed to a bit of comfort. Lukewarm would be okay. Why turn it off completely? If need be, the state says it's ready to lower the temperature in public buildings to 18 degrees Celsius or 64 degrees Fahrenheit. This includes national museums like the Louvre and the Centre Pompidou. To talk more about what provisions are being made as we head into winter, we speak to a director at the RTE, a body which manages France's energy distribution. 
Frédéric Charlet is director at RT. Thank you very much uh, for speaking to us here at France 24. How are you planning to ensure French households don't have power cuts this winter? Our teams have been working for more than six months now to prepare for this winter. They've been looking at consumption forecasts and how usage has evolved, also taking stock of the share of production that we will have this winter. And in fact, production share availability for this winter will be at an all-time low. The problem in winter is that we are very dependent on the temperature. One degree cooler in winter is an increase in consumption of 2,400 megawatts in France, which is equal to the city of Paris, which is enormous. How can individuals and households realistically cut down on their power consumption when they have to, to do things like use the washing machine, put food on the table, etc.? With electricity usage in France, there are actually two peak periods. Those times are between 8 a.m. and 1 p.m., and between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. And it peaks every evening at 7 p.m. sharp. After that, it drops down again because the stores are closing. And this is where we will ask the French to make eco-friendly adjustments to lower their electricity use. So either start cooking earlier or cooking later. Yeah. Are the French justified in worrying that there could be blackouts this year? There will be no blackout this winter because we are prepared. If we ever need to cut electricity, it will be planned, so there's no risk of a full blackout. ECOWAT, the alert we're going to send to the French people, is intended to reduce the risk of cuts, as it will encourage them to reduce their use of electricity during peak periods. So how does ECOWAT work exactly? ECOWAT is a website where French people can register to receive an alert. It actually works by color, green, orange, and red. So green, everything's fine. Orange, the situation is hitting its limit. In red, we foresee cuts that can be avoided with eco-friendly adjustments. So if there are power cuts, how would it happen and at what times of the day would it happen? So actually everyone, the whole French territory can be affected, and we will organize small power cuts of two hours. No one in France will have cuts that last more than two hours, and we'll do it like this across the different regions in France. For example, cuts between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. in the northern region, then 10 a.m. and noon in the east. We'll really spread this out across the country. Frédéric Charlie, thank you very much for speaking to us. You're welcome. As energy prices in France mount and the fear of cuts remains real, there are some in the country who are far from concerned. Around 100,000 households are producing their own electricity. Here's a look at how they're doing it. A quarter of this roof has been covered with solar panels for the past six months, supplying Patrick Thomason with energy. These panels supply the entire house, the window shutters, all the lights, the fridge, everything. This new retiree's home consumes a lot of energy. The bill each year comes in at 1,400 euros, but the solar panels are making a difference. For 2022, 161 euros a month. And on this app, I'm at 116 euros for two months. That's 200 euros savings over two months. When the weather's good and Patrick produces a surplus of energy, he's able to resell electricity to the country's main provider. Since March, I'm at 2,500 kilowatts. That's the equivalent of 250 euros. But the system has its limits. Energy produced from solar panels cannot be stored, meaning Patrick still has to buy electricity from time to time. The solar panels cost 13,000 euros to install, an investment which will take 10 years to pay off. Residents in the west of France are tapping into another natural and abundant source of energy, the wind. We're at the Irom wind farm, a park which has five turbines of 2.4 megawatts, which produces over 30 gigawatts per hour of electricity. Let's take the car so we can get a closer look. These wind turbines have been turning since 2020. They're owned by nearly 400 residents. It's an environmental move with a return on investment. We started the funding with an initial 1,000 euros threshold and a maximum of 20,000. So everyone gains depending on the initial amount they put in. Residents here were collectively able to raise 2.5 million euros. 
Three associations have since gotten involved with the project. With a total of 5 million euros in funds, the scheme was able to raise 26 million euros. To locally produce renewable energy is a source of pride, and we're also proud to be doing this collectively with close to 400 people. Of the three associations, Sharing Energy is the most involved and regularly organizes visits for curious locals. We are playing an active role in the energy transition, and we are playing an active role with this money, which is not going to a bank to fund fossil fuels. We place the money to fund something we deem is greener and is going in the right direction. But not everyone's swayed. I have the impression they're not telling us everything. They talk of green energy, but we don't see anything on our counter. We find it, but it's mixed with others. He's not entirely wrong. Electricity produced by the turbines is indeed sent to the grid, but it helps power 27,000 homes, excluding heating, a figure that's much higher than the number of initial investors. That's it for this edition of France in Focus from all of us on the team. Thank you very much for watching. The history of our world is ever-changing. The flow of information is constantly increasing. We cover all subjects. We verify. We commit. On the ground, in all circumstances, to anticipate the future by understanding the present. We are with you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, France 24, an alternative look at the news. Liberté, égalité, actualité. You know, with climate change happening, what it was, uh, what it is, you know, it's going to have a huge effect in the future um, on those generations who, who can't go down the sea ice and, you know, practice their traditions and keep their culture alive. It has a huge role in our mental well-being as well, you know, um, as any people to be able to go down the sea ice. They can look up the data that we've collected and then taking that data into consideration, you know, they can make the choices to help keep them safe while they're traveling on the sea ice to go to that location where they want to go to, you know, hunt seals or hunt partridges or to get the Arctic chair. I'm a firm believer that traditional knowledge is still number one. It's not replacing their traditional knowledge, but it's a new tool that they have in their back pocket that will help them keep safe while they're traveling on the sea ice. I'm Sarah Morris, France 24 correspondent in Madrid. I cover Spain and Portugal, two countries recovering from painful recessions, but now being challenged by the political and social fallout from those years. Watch me on Live from Paris and France 24 news programs. Sarah Morris, one of the 200 France 24 correspondents around the world.